Hello and welcome back to The Suffering. Well, the, the project really, but um, yeah, same thing really. <laughs> this particular build. Uh, so, part two here. Um, this sort of project has spanned a few months um, and a few parts and a few things like that. Um, so basically I got the whole thing together um, before realizing there was a problem with the serial system. Um, I could not get a mouse to work. Um, so I found one of these um, PCI cards. Um, the photo on the box is wrong, it's actually this one here. but um, And it stated it was compatible with DOS and Windows 95, 98. So uh, I picked it up. It arrived a week or two later, and uh, I figured we'll pop it into the system here and um, and just see how we go. I just wanted to rule out an issue with the motherboard or anything like that, um, any potential fault with that or configuration. Um, so I thought this might be an easier way just to sort of rule that out, given the mouse works on other systems. Uh, so as you can see, I'm in the BIOS here. I'm just going to disable any of the onboard uh, serial connections just to uh, make sure I don't have any conflicts. Um, these old machines don't sort of really have uh, good resource management like we've got now where you just plug something in and it literally just works. You don't have any IRQ conflicts or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to boot into Windows 95 and uh, just see if we get anything detected for the um, well, at least just getting the serial card to detect. Uh, so it's found it here. Um, I just need to get a driver, um, which thankfully the uh, box had, a, a, you know, a CD inside of it. Um, but I couldn't get it to read. And that's a clue of something else that's happening, which I didn't realize. Um, I'll come back to that one. But um, yeah, the driver is installed. As you can see here by this very professional uh, keyboard work which I don't even think I just showed it but basically it's installed a quick reboot and still no serial mouse uh, which was a bit annoying so I thought I'd try and manually add it via add new hardware wizard but um, unfortunately detection or manual work did not uh, get it in there now, unfortunately, this is where I really was clutching at straws and that things really went bad. Um, I thought, well, maybe, okay, uh, maybe I'll try the on board. I'll get the latest BIOS revision for the board. I thought I'd track down sort of the correct uh, BIOS version here um, and model of the board. Sometimes these uh, Socket 7 machines, uh, the boards are made by a few different people with the same sort of design set so it can be sort of a little bit harder to figure that out. And as you can see it failed to install so I thought well maybe I'll try an older version of the Flash Utility in case it doesn't sort of support my motherboard because it is from the 90s. And I uh, figured, hey, I'll try another um, flash with that version and see what it does. So, um, the one good thing about this utility is it gives you the option to save your old BIOS file, which um, became very handy as you're about to see. Uh, so I did that. Um, saved it to the floppy disk and then proceeded to write the incorrect <laughs> bin file to my uh, BIOS chip which then in turn uh, ruined it and uh, the computer just would not post it was dead I had actually uh, pushed that one a bit too far And so, another few weeks later, I sent my original BIOS chip and image to a guy on the internet who was kind enough to reflash my BIOS chip for me with my uh, backed up BIOS file, which thankfully I had done that backup. Uh, so just making sure I don't bend the pins there, putting the chip in, which I did, which I had to go back and fix. Um, and then um, it's just pretty much just putting all the cards back in, all the spaghetti, 
um, all that stuff and um, we'll just plug it in and see if the machine actually turns on. Okay, just after plugging everything back in, you can see here, uh, no device attached. So I'm back to square one, basically. So at this point, I did a lot of research, and it turns out um, the standards for DB9 connectors, or whatever you want to call them, they changed at some point. And mine is the type which is not compatible, the pinout is not compatible with uh, my mouse. So there's two options, you can either change the pins, and you can see here I'm basically trying to force uh, mouse detection on any of those serial ports, um, no luck. Or what I can do is use the onboard PS2 header, um, which also needed, as it turns out, some work. Um, I have this eBay special, and it wasn't until I actually tested some of the pins that I realized while testing continuity that the pins are back to front so it doesn't work which is great Um, basically all you need to do is push the little black tabs up with a small screwdriver easier said than done and then um, yeah go through each pin in this case just five for the mouse um, and make sure that the wiring is in the correct order for your header I had a motherboard manual which believe it or not was actually correct <laughs> for once um, and I just you know throw it together and then um, yeah I'll put it back in this case here and just see if it actually works So if a PS2 header installed, I thought it might be easier just removing this DB9 or serial com, whatever you want to call it, socket just to give it a bit of a cleaner look and less uh, cables inside. Um, and back in ye olde DOS, so you can run the mouse command there and mouse port device enabled, uh, it's good. So I'll check edit, see we have a cursor. We do, it moves, yes good uh, it's a bit hard to reenact that in, uh, excitement there but it was a huge one basically getting that working it was just like what no way so yeah I was really happy and the fact that you can use it with Windows um, was a nice bonus because trying to navigate Windows 3.11 with just a keyboard is terrible it's not like Windows 95 or anything like that it seems to be for some reason just a bit harder to work with um, without a mouse so yeah just um, run through the uh, setup for this and um, test some stuff out and you can hear this hard drive just going for it um, while installing 311 I'll cut to a clip here
And what do you know, as soon as I put the lid on, I get bitten in the backside yet again. This time the CD drive decided to pack a sad and stop reading my discs. Um, oddly enough, except burned ones, which is kind of strange, so yeah, it's just a bit of annoying that, so I had to take it apart. Um, and you can see here there is a bunch of um, things, including a pot which you can adjust uh, with a small Phillips screwdriver or flathead. Ideally you need an osc oscilloscope or something to measure the power that you're putting through to this because you can actually burn out the laser or whatever it's called. Um, but I thought, what the hell, I'll give it a go because, you know, well, whatever. And um, yeah. You can see here the same um, disc it is reading, which is good. I do like this uh, CD drive, it's a nice mechanism, but yeah, I might as well see if I can um, make use of it. And now, um, yeah, get some games on here and see what it can do.
Okay, now that the project is pretty much wrapped up, I'm just going to pop on the case lid. Um, thanks to uh, everyone for your help. It's um, you know it's been very valued having um, such support in the community from Facebook and um, Vogons and stuff like that to work out the serial issues. Um, those standards definitely changed, so. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description if anyone else needs any more information on that, but yeah. Um, yep, yeah, definitely learned a lot on this one, and um, it was a project that was for sure um, a challenge, but everyone stay safe, thanks for watching, give it the last whack, and um, yeah, catch you in the next one.